And it's the Ravens this weekend. For the first time ever during Ben Roethlisberger's career, the Ravens are favored in Pittsburgh wow. against Roethlisberger. Wow. They've, they've caught Pittsburgh three times since 2004 without Roethlisberger in Pittsburgh, and they were favored, and they won each of the games by three points, two of them in overtime. But this is the first time against Roethlisberger that they're favored to win. There has been some talk from former Steelers players who look at what's going on in Pittsburgh now and have thought this isn't the Steelers team that I know from my time there. Mike Tomlin addressed that issue as well yesterday as it relates to criticism coming from outsiders who used to be on the inside. Ex-players, guys that played for you, the question of the physicality and the effort and that kind of stuff, does that have any more significance? They would know. You know, um, they know the things that we value. I don't know specifically what you're talking about, um, but guys that have been here, um, guys that have been in that room, guys that understand the standards uh, that we aspire to, um, they probably have a better understanding of that than anybody that's not uh, in that room right now. And so I would imagine whatever it is you refer to, I agree with them. Hey, uh, um, maybe he needs to bring some of those guys in to talk to the team. I mean, yeah, seriously. It, and, and and this, see, I struggle with this. And we saw it with Andy Reid in Philadelphia. Yeah. We're possibly seeing it with Pete Carroll in Seattle. Mm. And okay. I hate, I, I, I resist this because I know that it's low-hanging fruit for that segment of the Steeler fan base that immediately goes to the fire Mike Tomlin button whenever there's any sustained adversity. And I'm not saying fire Mike Tomlin. I'm not. I'm, I'm one of the. I, I was yeah, one of you're the guys a big in 2007 backer of them, saying no doubt. hire Mike Tomlin instead of Russ Grimm. What are you doing hiring Russ Grimm? Hire Mike Tomlin. He's the best guy for this job. He's going to turn the team around. He's the perfect coach at the perfect time for this team. And he's got that Pittsburgh mindset. He's got that mentality. And we've yeah. seen it since 2007. Right. And they have never had a losing record. Right. They, you take it for granted if you're a Steelers fan. But I. I I feel like this is the beginning of a disconnect mm, mm. between him and the guys in the locker room. And I don't know why that is. And is it is it even in this day and age with so much turnover year in and year out and your team every year is a different entity than it was last year? Yeah. But even then, is it possible that there's a shelf life? Now, for everyone except Bill Belichick, is there a shelf life – for Pete Carroll, yeah. for Mike Tomlin, for Andy Reid in Philadelphia, who, boom, went straight to Kansas City. And what did he do? He just picked up where he left off with great teams. But it got to the point in Philadelphia where the message didn't resonate anymore. In, you know, in Seattle, the raw, raw, always compete and chewing the gum. And there's a point where it just, sure. even with new players all the time, it becomes institutionally stale. Yeah. Could it be? That that's what's happening in Pittsburgh. I, I, it's fair to ask, Mike. I mean, I don't think you're wrong to ask that question. It, it does. I mean, there there's a shelf life a little to to most coaches, you know, as far as like you you know what you're talking about, the message, the energy they bring to the team on a daily basis that can that can become stale. There's no doubt, unless like you said, you're Bill Belichick, but he has the results to always back it up too. So it's hard to get stale that way, you know. But I'm not. I'm not willing to say that yet. I think it's a fair question, but I'm not willing to say. It. You know, just the way Cam. I'm not saying it. Either. I know. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying it I know. Either. I know. No, I know you're not. I'm just saying I'm not willing either. I'm just you know the way Cam Hayward answered that question. You know, a few times even earlier in the year, I'm not going to be able to bring him up specifically. I just feel like the players stick up for the most part for Tomlin's message. But yes, this is not typical Steelers football right now. But again. It, it's when you don't have the right Jimmys and the Joes, it's hard to execute the X's and the O's of what you want in Pit, in Pittsburgh. And yeah, the Ryan Clark's of the world, the James Harrison's, you know, the other great defensive players who used to play there are not there anymore. I'm sure they are like, what the hell is going on? Because they know, I mean, Pittsburgh is that team, you know, they're one of that like group of teams in all of football, no matter what, doesn't matter how good they are this year. When you walked out on the field against Pittsburgh Steelers 20 years ago or now, you always go, whoa, holy crap, look at all these big bad dudes out here. Damn. And they're angry and just look like they can't wait to hit. Like they're a bunch of crazy dudes out here. They've always been that team, and I don't think we're seeing that kind of come through the TV right now. 
And that's probably shocking to, you know, guys who have been in that culture before. Something just occurred to me as well. It yeah. could be that this is brilliance on the part of Tom and like switch to Southpaw unexpectedly on his players. And and the message is and and you know how cutting this can be. I don't know that you've ever been on the other side of this, but anytime anyone ever says to you, Man, you've changed. You've 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 changed. Right. You're like, what? I'm the same person. No, no, you've changed. Right. Well, are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad. I'm I'm just sad. I'm disappointed. You've changed. It's it's kind of like a subtle challenge uh-huh. to the like, guys in the locker yeah. room. Like, I don't even know what to do with you all yeah. anymore. You've changed. You're hurting you're, me. You're, not, you're hurting you're, you're, me now. I, I'm personally yeah. hurt. Right, yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I just wonder if this is the Mike Tomlin tool bag, one that we have never seen before, that this is the Mike Tomlin way of getting them properly motivated, focused, and determined to kick the crap out of the Ravens on Sunday. All right, listen, you 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 have the best gut ever with Pittsburgh for the most part. You've always ever since I've been working with you, you always know oh, this is a game. Watch out. Pittsburgh wins this game. All odds are against them and here they go. You you've been great with all that. You really have. And again, what I'll say it, I know you've heard me say it a million times, but I'm gonna say it one more time for people who haven't watched the show. He's the greatest communicator and motivator I was around in my NFL career and he's the kind of guy that when I see him now and if we're hanging out for a few minutes and he starts talking, I'm like, damn, I want to go play. Let's, let's play. Let Mike Tomlin be my coach. And here we go. You know, John Gruden used to have this thing uh, where he would let one coach kind of talk to the team on a weekly basis through the quarters of the season, you know, like, Hey, you're, you're the guy that can come up here twice a week and motivate the team and play like de facto head coach, you know, through weeks one through four or, you know, five through eight. And when it was Mike Tomlin's time, what, what? It was the energy he could bring. The message he always brought was always creative and it hit home. And man, I know guys in the locker room loved it in Tampa Bay. I did. And I was just some wimpy quarterback. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to doubt him in this department yet, but I do think the odds are severely, severely stacked against him this year. It's just hard. And with the defense not having a Bud Hayward, uh, I mean a Bud Dupree, and you know Stephon Tuitt not healthy and out there, Tyson Alualu injured, Joe Hayden injured, you know, I, I just there's only so much motivating and things you can do to make a team go run through the wall and be the most physical team on the football field. Well, and this may be the plan this week. Yeah. It may be yeah. it may be not in your face. It may just be reverse psychology. I'm, I'm you're letting I'm me down. Yeah. You're I let- don't know what to do. Yeah. I I got nothing. If you're not gonna respond, I got nothing. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to ask yourselves if if you really want to be football players. Because what I'm seeing on the film, when I go back and watch this Bengals game, I see a bunch of guys that just don't want to be football players anymore. I, I mean you know Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, uh, we yeah. got our picks podcast tomorrow. I got twenty four. Oh, here he goes! Look, soda. he's talking to himself into Steeler. He's over. getting his black and yellow oh, out. <laughs> oh, terrible towels floating around here somewhere, baby. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.